Right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And always happy to see our friend D. Lynn Proctor, who is with Penfolds, the winemaking attache. Well, all around stud of a wine guy and uh, famous from the movie Psalm. And uh, let me tell you, man, this guy knows his Penfolds history as good as anybody. He puts on a show as good or better than Peter Gago, John Duvall, or anybody we have ever worked with at Penfolds. And he's coming back on July 1st to do one of our, I think we're going to do two events with Penfolds. Why not? Annual event? Dewey annual events. Anyways, uh, he brought the kitchen sink with him today from Penfolds. And... Um, you know, as, as long as you bring Grange, I'll taste through 10, 11 wines, man. To get to Grange, no problem. But everything in this Penfolds lineup is excellent. The Eden Valley Riesling, one of my favorite whites these guys do. A dry style of Riesling, that white peach, wet stone, green apple fruit, lime citrus, really nice hints of white flowers. This is bright and fresh on the tongue, a nice zest and minerality, leaving the tongue salivating for food. Excellent juice. As is the Chardonnay, Bin 311, Tambaramba. And uh, this wine, very distinct. It does spend some time in oak, but neutral oak. It's got a really distinct minerality to it, a seashell briny quality to the nose, that green apple, lemon citrus, really nice freshness to this wine, and a nice richness to the palate, but, man, you don't notice the oak in it at all. Excellent juice, the Bin 311 Chardonnay. They're not known for their white wines, but these two from Penfolds, excellent. All right, the Bin 9 and Bin 8, Bin 9's Cabernet Sauvignon. They're going to change the label for these wines to make it a little more distinct, the entry-level class, because these wines look a little bit too much like the higher-level wines. And I kind of agree with that change. And, um, you know, these wines, iconic wines from Australia. This Cabernet Bin 9, 100% Cabernet, 25% New American French Oak, has a nice bouquet, that black olive and fine herbs, the dark currant berry fruit, nice richness on the tongue. But all of these wines, lovely balance. This wine's got fine tannins, that dark spice and black olive topping on, lasting through the finish. Very good juice, as is the Shiraz Bin 8. I have to say, I... Throw my hat up. Both of these are, it's a toss-up on which one is better this year. The blackberry fruit here, violets, a classic uh, Shiraz from South Australia with dark mocha notes. Um, you have to go back to the 65 vintage for the first release of this wine. They've been making it for a long time. A nice roundness to the palate. These uh, 2013s showing a nice balance, a really lovely amount of precocious fruit and uh, lovely freshness. Very good juice. The 138 Shiraz, all Barossa Valley fruit. Uh, Shiraz Grenache Mataro Valley, rather, all from Barossa. This wine's got a pretty nose of that mixed berry pie kind of uh, fruit. Dark spices, notes of pretty floral notes. Very smooth and silky on the tongue. Another real crowd pleaser. Pretty floral notes, that red licorice spice coming in on the finish. Excellent juice. As is the Kunawara Shiraz. 62 was the first vintage of this wine. The Bin 128 100% Kunawara, more classic style of Shiraz, cigar box spice. Uh, this wine has neutral French oak. You really notice the eucalyptus minty character here, some smoky burnt campfire notes as well. This wine is smooth as silk on the tongue, that lovely dark plum and blackberry fruit, tobacco spice, lovely freshness on the finish here. Excellent juice, as is the Kalimna 28. 59 was the first vintage of this wine. All iconic wines from this Penfolds lineup today. Blackberry jam, violet floral notes, black licorice spice, bitter cocoa, lovely complexity here on the nose. Delivering that dark plum and blackberry fruit through on the palate with fine tannins, a long finish, echoing that nuance from the nose, the pretty floral notes and dark spices through the finish. Excellent juice. The 407... Um, this is Premier Cru Cabernet, produced for the first time in 1990 by both John Duvall and Peter Gago. Bit of Brett here in this wine, though, but hey, man, you know Wines from the Bordeaux from the 70s and 80s were plagued with Brett. People thought it just added a little layer of complexity, which I agree a little bit of it can be, um... Pleasant. This one's got some nice cigars, wrapper, and chocolate notes as well, and uh, a lot of nice uh, fruit as well. Elegant style of Cabernet and a long finish. This 407, excellent juice. As is the 389, maybe the best 389 I've ever had, known as the Baby Grange. This 2013 showing a dizzying array of dark plum and cherry currant berry fruit on the nose, black licorice spice, violets, damp earth, a note of black olive ear as well. Really rich and layered on the tongue. Lots of jammy fruit, that violet floral nuance and those dark spices from the nose lasting through the finish. Most excellent juice. Why do you need to drink Grange? 
Well, let me tell you, man, the 2010 Grange, a monster, a little blockbuster. The 2011 is coming out this year. Hey, we had the RWT 08. We've already had that. That's from Ebenezer Mappa and other prime vineyards. 110-year-old average vines. This 2008 vintage still needs time. The uh, RWT, well, the kind of antithesis of Grange, it's, they use new French oak to age the Shiraz here. Um, wow, big blockbuster wine. The 2008 will last for another decade as all of Penfold's wines age incredibly well. Let me tell you, this 2010 Grange we had a year ago, it tastes identical to that wine we had a year ago. Still uh, has not stepped up the evolution. This wine is going to need a decade or more in your cellar. There is a reason why Grange is one of the greatest wines in the world and one of the most unique, iconic wines because it's not from a single vineyard. And the vineyard sources change and the growers in South Australia to them, the highest honor that they could be bestowed upon them is for Penfolds to say your wine is included and Grange this year. One of the world's truly iconic wines and most age-worthy. This 2010 Grange, like I said, is going to last for decades. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.